So welcome to this uh, class on balancing chemical equations and I'm going to be teaching you some secret tricks on how to balance chemical equations. And uh, I'm very confident that once you watch this entire class, so once you watch the whole class, you'll easily be able to balance any chemical equation. So I'm going to make the concepts of balancing of chemical equations really easy for you. Okay guys, so do make sure you watch the entire class and I'm sure you'll find it really easy. And guys, as you know, I have a, uh, I have my YouTube channel, Manocha Academy, and I have a website, manochaacademy.com, where I put these physics courses for class nine and class 10. So all of you, please uh, do check it out. And yes, I do have uh, real big discounts on these courses for you on both the physics uh, class nine course and the physics class 10 course. So guys, do check out the link manochaacademy.com and I'll also put it down below. All right. So welcome everyone. Hi, welcome. I see a lot of folks are here. Hello. So welcome to this class. As I told you, it's on balancing of chemical equations. And so this is for anyone who's from class 10, class 9, class 7 or class 8. Anybody who wants to learn uh, balancing of chemical equations or even if you're in class 11 or 12. Okay, because I'm going to show you some really simple tricks and the techniques of how to balance any chemical equation. And I'm totally confident you'll be able to balance any equation after watching this video. Okay, guys, so let's get started. So uh, what are the ways to balance a chemical equation? In this video, we'll be talking about the table method, the hit and trial method here. So these are the methods we are going to be covering the table method. I'll teach you the hit and trial method and a very important method called the ABCD method. So, and one important thing, patience and practice is very important. Okay, guys. So to balance chemical equations, you must have the patience and practice to do it. Okay. Uh, and with practice, you'll see, you'll find it really easy. Now, I'm sure you've gone to the vegetable shop, right, to the fruit seller and you've seen this beam balance, right? And what do they do there? They're basically balancing the mass. So all of you know that they go ahead and put weights here, right? So this on this pan, they're going to put some weights. And what do we say? They're balancing the weight of the apple with these or in physics terms, we say they're balancing the mass. So the goal here is they're trying to balance the mass or we can say balance the weight, right? So that is uh, one thing to visualize about what is balancing of stuff, right? So you use a beam balance, but in this uh, video, we are going to be balancing chemical equations. Now let's see what does that mean? So let's say we have our equation here. Uh, let's say it's hydrogen plus oxygen is water. And as guys, as you know that this is called a word equation. And that needs to be converted into a chemical equation, right? So word equation needs to be converted into this chemical equation that you see here. Can you see H2 plus O2 is H2O. So I'm sure all of you know how to convert a word equation to a chemical equation, right? So how to do this conversion. And if you don't know that I have a video on how to write a chemical equation. So do check it out. It's on my channel Manocha Academy. So you must know this first step of how to convert a word to a chemical equation. And what's the basic idea? You know that hydrogen, one molecule of hydrogen is H2, as you can see here, right? One molecule of oxygen is represented by O2. We don't write O because the atomicity is two for both hydrogen and oxygen. And one molecule of water is H2O, right? So it's not H2 plus O2 is H2O2, okay? Because we know based on valency, the molecule is H2O. All right, I'll share a link or you can just search uh, chemical equations and reactions Manocha Academy and you'll find that video, right? Uh, so this is what is known as a chemical equation. I'm sure all of you have seen this. Now one important thing is what are we trying to balance and why? Just like the fruit seller is trying to balance the mass of the apples and the weights, here we are trying to balance the mass of the reactants so mass of reactants here and what are the reactants the guys on the left hand side right you guys know 
So hydrogen and oxygen are the reactants and we are trying to balance that so that should equal to the mass of the products. That's our goal. And what is the products here? The guy on the right hand side, water, right? So first let's take a look, is this equation balanced? What does it mean by balancing mass? So guys, do you know what is the mass of one hydrogen atom? So what is the mass of one hydrogen atom, tell me? So the mass of hydrogen atom, very good. I see a lot of you are writing one, one U, excellent. So you know the atomic uh, mass is represented. So hydrogen is uh, one U, right? Where U is the atomic mass unit. So H2 is basically going to be two U, right? So two into one. Now what is the mass of one oxygen atom? As you guys may know, oxygen is 16 U, right? So oxygen molecule is going to be 16 into 2, simple, that's going to be 32 U, right? So hydrogen atom is 2 U and oxygen atom is 32 U, okay? Now let's look at the mass of this water molecule. So can you tell me what is it going to be here? So it's going to be 2 into 1 U, right? Plus 16. So the mass of one oxygen uh, water molecule, sorry, is 18 U. Very good. I see a lot of you are writing 18 U. Excellent. So now if we add up these masses, right? So if we just take this equation, which we know is not balanced, but let's take a look at this equation and let's see why it's not balanced. So if you sum these two masses, so 2 U plus 32 U. So how much do we have on the left hand side? We have 34 U. And on the right side, we have 18 U. So this is the important thing. Can you see guys that the mass of the left and right hand side is unbalanced. So if we go ahead and place hydrogen on this left pan, right, and oxygen over here, and if we place this H2O over here, you can see that the mass is unbalanced right now because it's uh, 34 here, 34U, so it was H2 plus O2, and it's uh, 18U here, right? So this beam balance is going to turn this way. So the beam balance will turn this way. So what is uh, very good someone has written. So I was going to ask that question. Why are we balancing it? Because the law of conservation of mass needs to be followed. This is not possible that you cannot, uh, you cannot have that mass of reactants is more than products or mass of products is more than the reactants because we know in a chemical reaction, the law of conservation of mass states that mass can neither be created nor destroyed. So the mass needs to remain the same. Okay, so this is the important thing that we are balancing the mass of the uh, reaction. So mass of reactants should be equal to mass of products. And now you guys know for this equa simple equation, so uh, which I'm going to teach you the balancing, but you know the balance equation is going to be 2H2 plus O2 is 2H2O. We'll take a look why uh, and how to get that. So now let's check the mass of the balanced equation. So this is our balanced equation, right? 2H2 plus O2 gives us 2H2O, okay? So now if you calculate the mass, let's see how much do we get on the left hand side. It's going to be two, uh, this uh, two hydrogen, two into one and into two here. So hydrogen is 4U plus oxygen is 32U. And how much is two water molecules? Two into 18, right? Which is equal to 36U. And if you add up the left hand side, can you see 32 plus 4? That's right, 36 U. So now you can see these guys are equal. Can you see that? That the left and right hand side will be equal. So this means to balance this beam balance, if you visualize it like this, you should have two hydrogen molecules here, one oxygen molecule and two molecules of water here. So this is going to become 36 U and the left hand side will also be, the reactants will also be 36 U. So is that clear guys? So we are, uh, please remember this is a very famous question. Why are you balancing chemical reactions? To satisfy the law of conservation of mass. And as you can see, once the equation is balanced, if you apply the masses that you know, like hydrogen is one, oxygen is 16, you know carbon is 12 U, whatever the mass you use, you're gonna get the left and right hand side, the total masses equal. That's right, someone has written, so 36 equal to 36, excellent. So that is the key concept. But now there's one simplification. 
we actually don't have to bother about masses when balancing chemical equations. We can simply balance the number of atoms of each element. So it should be same on the left and on the right hand side. So can you tell me how many atoms of hydrogen are there for this balanced equation here? So two into two, four, right? So can you see that on the left side there are four hydrogen atoms and on the right also you can see there are four hydrogen atoms because two into two water molecule uh, two into two water molecules so that's two into two four and oxygen is going to be uh, you can see O2 so there are two oxygen on the left and how many on the right we have two water molecules so two into one that's two O so can you see there's four hydrogen on the left and four hydrogen on the right two oxygen on the left two oxygen on the right so this is an important simplification. We don't have to worry about masses in the balancing equation topic. You just have to balance the number of atoms of each element, right? So every element, the number of atoms need to be balanced because you know the element cannot change in a chemical equation. So the left hand side for hydrogen or any element, the number of atoms should be same on the left and on the right. Clear? So please keep that in mind. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and uh, as I promised you, I'll be discussing these important methods to balance chemical equations. So we look at the table method, hit and trial method, and the secret important ABCD method. And I'm confident that once you've understood these methods, you can easily balance any chemical equation. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. And of course, if you have any doubts, please uh, put it in the comments below. I'll try to respond to your comments as soon as possible. And uh, guys, do hit the like button uh, for this video and do share it out with your friends. So let's take a look at the table method. This is the most basic, simple method that we should know. So what is the first step? Make a table of the number of atoms of each element of the left and right hand side. Okay, so I'll show you with an example. And remember to start by balancing the easiest element. Just like when we are doing, uh, we are studying uh, we tend to start with the easiest chapter right in the syllabus so that our confidence becomes good same way here guys start with the easiest element not the most difficult one and then keep on going till the table is balanced and remember i told you patience is the key uh, don't lose hope keep trying it and i'm sure you can balance it so let me show you how to apply the table technique so what is the table method first make these columns of elements left hand side right hand side so what are the elements in this equation the elements are so these are our three columns here so elements as you can see are hydrogen and oxygen so guys can you tell me how many hydrogen atoms are there on the left hand side so just as we saw earlier can you see it is h2 so that's two hydrogen atoms so remember here in the uh, column of elements just write h and o don't write h2o2 because we are looking at the number of atoms of each element and how many hydrogen atoms on the right side? Very good, it's two. And again, on the right also, it's two. Now, how many oxygen atoms on the left? Can you see it's O2? So it's two here and one here. So we made this table. Now, the first thing to check is the equation balanced. As you can see, it's not because hydrogen is balanced. But can you see that oxygen is more on, uh, less on the right and more on the left? So oxygen is not balanced. Now, what's our uh, table technique? Start by balancing the easiest element. Since hydrogen is balanced, we don't have to worry about it. So the only other element is oxygen here. So let's start with oxygen. So uh, since oxygen is less on the right, we need to multiply it. Okay, so uh, can I do something like this? Can I do H2O2 and balance the equation? I can't do that, right? Because I'm changing the formula. H2O is water. But H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. So please remember this important point. You can't make any changes in the formula. That's not, uh, that's not what you can do. So what you can do because the chemical formula is fixed. So what we can do is multiply here. So multiply in front of the formula and try to use the smallest possible number. So here, since we need to uh, get uh, two oxygen, so we'll multiply by two. And so if I cancel this, oxygen is gonna become two. So it looks nice and balanced. But how many hydrogen will there be on the right now? It's going to be four because two into two, two multiplied by two, four. 
okay two times two is four there so can you see oxygen is nicely balanced but oops we have disturbed hydrogen but guys don't worry we'll balance hydrogen also so again we look at this table so oxygen is balanced next our goal is to balance hydrogen now can you see hydrogen is two on the left side so can you see it's two here but more on the right so to balance it we need to multiply on the left side and we are going to multiply by two here right so i'm going to multiply this equation by two on the left side and so what it's going to become so on the left side we are going to get two times two so that's four now you can see in this table technique the equation is balanced can all of you see that right so our equation is balanced here and look in the table or if you look at each row so hydrogen row you have four and four similarly oxygen you have two and two so our equation is balanced excellent now let's apply the table method here for this equation so again to revise so guys you can uh, use a pen and paper and try this yourself uh, so make these three uh, columns elements left hand side and right hand side and what are elements here it's iron hydrogen and oxygen note i'm not writing h2o2 right fe hno now let's look at how many elements of iron on the left side can you see there's one atom uh, sorry how many atoms of each element right so number of iron atoms is one here can you see that so one and how many iron atoms on the right side it's three because you have fe3 so that's three now how many hydrogen on the left side h2 so we're going to have two here and how many on the right again it's two and how many oxygen on the left can you see one and oxygen on the right side is four so very important make this table carefully and first you check is the table is the equation balanced no because you can see hydrogen is balanced but iron and oxygen are not balanced okay so let's apply our table technique that was our method right so uh, make a table and start by balancing the easiest one so let's start with the hydrogen is balanced so let's start with iron since iron is not balanced and it's easy to balance it so three times iron so that's going to be three and you can see we have balanced iron now the next guy left is oxygen right so can you see oxygen is four on the right side so to balance it i need to multiply i can't make any change to the formula so i'll multiply by four so it's going to be four times uh, one so that's four but note carefully we have disturbed hydrogen because it's four h2o so four times two hydrogen is now going to become eight simple okay but uh, can you see that uh, iron is balanced uh, oxygen is balanced but hydrogen is not balanced so to balance hydrogen very good i am seeing a lot of you are balancing and writing the correct equation in the chat excellent uh, well done so we need to multiply it by four here to balance it why because we need eight hydrogen eight is on the left side so to get uh, eight on the right We'll multiply by four, not by eight, because four times two will give us eight atoms. So simple, just use a pencil or pen and cancel uh, and keep making updates in the table and then finally check it. Because checking is very important. You can see iron is balanced three and three, hydrogen is eight and oxygen is four and four. Clear? So this is how you balance it using the table method. Now let's take a look at uh, one last one. This one is a little more complicated. So let's try the table technique for this. So we'll again like write the elements, left hand side, right hand side, okay? So what are our elements here? Lead, is the element nitrate? No, because we need to break it down, right? Nitrogen and oxygen. We are writing the table of elements. And again, we'll do the count of the number of atoms of each element. So lead is one on the left side, can you see? So we have one lead here and right side also one lead. How many nitrogen do we have on the left here? So can you tell me guys, how many nitrogen on the left? Is it one or is it two? So how many nitrogen atoms on our left side? Somebody saying one, somebody saying four, two. This is very important. So in nitrate, can you see? So in NO3, can you see that there's only one? So 
if I write it, so this one is N1O3, right? It's NO3, but it's times two because there's NO3 whole two. So you need to multiply this one and two. So nitrogen is two on the left and how many nitrogen on the right? One, clear? Now let's see how many oxygen atoms on the left side. So oxygen is three times two. Can you see that guys? So it's three times two. So that's gonna be six oxygen on the left. Okay, very good, six is the right answer. And how many oxygen on the right side guys? So six on the left and how many oxygen atoms on the right side? Somebody saying five, one, two, okay guys. So here you need to count all the oxygen. So one plus two, three plus two, and that's five, okay? So please remember this table, very good, five is the right answer. This table is very important because you need to make the uh, count of atoms of each element. Now uh, let's go ahead and see how to balance this. So you can see lead is balanced already, so we don't worry about it right now. And nitrogen is not balanced, oxygen is not balanced. So which atom is easy to balance? Nitrogen, okay? So to balance nitrogen, we'll multiply by two here. So that's gonna become two, and oxygen will get disturbed, but don't worry. So two into two, four, plus two, six, seven, right? So now lead is balanced, nitrogen is balanced, but oh no, oxygen is not balanced here. Can you see it's six and the table right now I've updated it to seven. So what do we need to do here? Since oxygen is less on the left hand side, we need to multiply by two. So I'll just erase this N1 here. And uh, to balance oxygen, let's multiply by two here. So now how many uh, so entire thing has got disturbed. So lead is going to become 2 here. So 2 PB. Nitrogen is going to be, it was 2, but we multiplied by 2. So it's going to be 4. And oxygen was 3 into 2, 6. It was 6. We multiplied by 2. So we have 12 oxygen, right? And now if you see on the right, we have, so we've disturbed the entire thing, right? But we're not going to worry. So again, we're going to start with the easiest element because oxygen looks difficult. So let's start with lead again. So let we have uh, two here and one on this side. So to balance it, we are going to multiply by two here. So this is going to be two. And what is the new oxygen? Oxygen is going to be two plus, uh, this is two times two, four plus two, six, seven, eight. Right, is my counting correct? So please make sure the counting is right. So we have two to two, four, six, seven, eight. Okay. And uh, so lead is balanced, nitrogen, is not balanced, right? You can see we have a four here and a two here. So to balance it, I'm gonna multiply by a four on the right hand side. So this is gonna become four. So guys, can you see that? And now how many oxygen on the right side? So take a look. So the number of oxygen atoms on the right is gonna be two, two into one plus four into two. So two plus eight, plus two, 12. And can you see, so what do we have here? So this is gonna be 12. And can you see that our equation is balanced? So here we balance this equation and this is the important thing. We just were balancing the simple elements and then balancing the difficult one like oxygen turned out to be automatic. It automatically got balanced so we didn't have to worry about it, clear? So this is the important thing guys that make sure you start with the easiest element, not the most difficult one. And this table technique is very simple. It's very uh, kind of formal technique where you can see the number of atoms on the left and right and make sure that each row in the table is balanced. Excellent. Now let's take a look at the hit and trial method. So till now we discussed uh, about the table technique. Now we'll see the hit and trial method. So this is a, a very simple method. So uh, table method is the basic method and this you can use once you start becoming more comfortable with it because this you are going to directly do it mentally. So let's see how do we do this. Again, the important rule is start by balancing the easiest element. Don't select the difficult one, okay? And then keep doing it till the equation is balanced and I'm going to show you some special tricks with fractions also, okay? So let's take a look guys. Uh, so to balance here, 
you can see that sodium is balanced, 1, 1, 1 on the left, 1 on the right. So we are not going to make a table this time. Chlorine is 2 on the left and 1 on the right. So to balance chlorine, we are simply going to multiply by 2 here. So now chlorine is balanced, but sodium is disturbed, right? So there's 2 sodium there and there. To multiply it by 2, we get. So this is the uh, quick way to balance it. Just mentally, you go element by element and we've balanced our equation. Great. Let's try uh, next one. So guys, can you try this? We have KClO3. Uh, when you heat it, it gives KCl, potassium chloride, plus oxygen. So potassium chlorate on heating gives potassium chloride plus oxygen. So I want you guys to try this uh, chemical, uh, balancing this chemical reaction. Okay, guys, so give this a shot. So try to uh, balance it uh, by the hit and trial method. So this we are not going to uh, make a table here. So why don't you guys try this? Okay, guys, so I want you to uh, try this thing. So balancing, very good. I'm seeing some answers and you guys have the right answer. So that's great. So you can uh, balance this by the hit and trial method. And let me show you uh, one special technique here. So if you look at this equation, potassium is balanced. It's one on each side. Chlorine is also balanced. Can you see? So I'm seeing a lot of you got the right answer. Great. So chlorine is also balanced. Oxygen is the guy who's causing trouble, right? So can you see there's three oxygen on the left? So we have three oxygen on the left and two on the right side, right? So the simple way we can balance this is we are going to use the fraction technique. Since there's only one guy left, we can do three by two here. So now carefully look at this method. So now if you look, so if you do three by two, what are you going to get? So three by two times two because it's O2 is going to be three, right? Two and two will cancel. So to balance it, you can apply fractions also. But we can't leave the, the final equation, cannot have uh, fractions. So what do we need to do? Since we, um, we have two in the uh, denominator of the fraction, to balance the whole equation, we simply need to multiply by two here. Okay, so if you multiply by two, it's going to become two KClO3, two KCl, and this two is going to get cancelled. So this is going to be three here. Right? So our balanced equation is going to be 2KClO3 gives 2KCl plus 3O2. And as you can see in our answer, there are no more fractions left. So this is a very uh, quick technique to use fractions and quickly balance the equation. Okay? So excellent. Let's try this one also. So we have another hit and trial method here where you have C4H10 plus O2 gives carbon dioxide plus water. So let's try to balance this with our hit and trial method. So the first thing uh, we can see carbon is not balanced. So we're going to quickly balance it by multiplying by four here. Right guys. And hydrogen is 10 on the left and it's two on the right. Okay. So it's easy to balance hydrogen by doing uh, five here. Do you guys agree? Now, how do you balance the oxygen? So oxygen we didn't do initially because it's more tough, right? There's uh, CO2 and there's H2 on the right hand side. So to balance oxygen, now let's count the atoms of oxygen here. 4 times 2, 8 plus 5. So can you see that we have 13 oxygen on the right hand side, right? And we have only 2 oxygen here. So guys, can you see? So now you, again, you can be smart and apply the fraction technique because only this guy is left. So to balance it, we'll need to do 13 by 2. Now can you see is the equation balanced? Because 13 by 2 times 2 is going to give us 30. So we'll have 13 on the left and 13 on the right. Okay. So now guys, uh, but we can't leave the fraction. Remember, you're not allowed to read uh, fractions in your equation. All the coefficients should be uh, a whole numbers. Uh, so we'll multiply the whole thing by 2. So if we do that, we are going to get 2, this will get cancelled, you will get an 8 here and a 10 here. So our answer is going to look like this, 2C4H10, that's butane, plus 
13 oxygen is going to give 8 carbon dioxide plus 10 water. Right? So see here, we've done the hidden trial method and we've used the uh, fractions also to uh, get the, to the quick answer. All right. So guys, uh, uh, once you're comfortable with the table technique, you can start using hit and trial method because as you can see, it's much faster. You don't have to draw the whole table. But of course, if it gets difficult, you can go to the table or next I'll be talking about another special technique using which you can balance any difficult equation. Okay, guys. So are you ready for the next method? It's called the ABCD method. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look. What is uh, this method? So to apply this method, because the whole goal of the uh, balancing the equation is to find the correct coefficients. So since we don't know the coefficients, we are going to put them here, right? So you can just say, let's say the first coefficient is A in this equation. Let's say the second one is B, C, D. And if you have more, you can write E, F and so on. Okay. So take a look at this uh, important method called ABCD method, right? And now for each element, you write down the equations for the coefficient. So first you write down the coefficients in the equation as I've shown you in the first step. And now for each element, you need to write the coefficients. You need to write the equation for the coefficient. So I'm going to show you that. And then uh, the coefficient that occurs the maximum number of times, you can let that to be one. You solve for the coefficients just like you do in mathematics. And then remember to remove the fractions. So let me explain you this method with the help of an example. Okay, so let's take a look. So don't worry, it's going to be clear once we do the example. So this is our equation. So let's put our coefficients here, guys. So you can do this on a pen and paper to understand this better. So make sure you have your pen and paper ready. So first write down the equation and write A, B, C, D, right? And now we'll make this table, right? So our table was elements. So what were our elements here? Nitrogen. What are they in this equation? Hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. And now we'll see uh, how many nitrogen. Uh, so uh, we want the atoms of each element should be balanced. So let's look at the number of atoms of nitrogen on the left and on the right. So let's take a look. So how many nitrogen atoms on the left? Can you see this a number of atoms because a times one. So that's going to be a here, right? And how many nitrogen atoms on the right? Can you see it's C? Okay. And since we want them to be equal, we're going to write this equation A equal to C. Clear? Next one, let's look at hydrogen. So can you see how many hydrogen atoms are there on the right, uh, left side, guys? So how many hydrogen atoms we have on the left? So it's going to be 3 times A. So this is going to be 3A right and how many uh, hydrogen atoms do we have on the right side okay so how many hydrogen atoms uh, on the right guys okay so let's take a look how many hydrogen atoms on the right can you see it's going to be 2d very good so a lot of you are answering that it's 2d on the right side so write down that equation and now let's take a look at oxygen so how many oxygen do we have on the left side it's going to be 2 times b so we have 2b here and now how many oxygen on the right side so take a look carefully how many oxygen atoms are there on the right side of the equation so oxygen is going to be as you can see there's c here and then there's D over here, right? So it's going to be C plus D. Right, guys? So you have 2B on the left side and C plus D on the right side. So we've got our three equations. And now remember, what is the important step? Uh, so we've done the second step. For each element, we've written the equation. And the coefficient that occurs the maximum times, let that coefficient be 1. So which coefficient you can see is occurring here two times. So we have two A's, we have uh, two C's, we have only one B and two D's. So we have A, C and D all three occurring two times. So let's take A equal to one. Okay. 
So we are going to take here. So you can take any coefficient as one, but it's important to take the one that is occurring the most times uh, as one because that's going to be easy. So we have a equal to one. Now, if you look at that first equation, since a and c are same, so c is also going to be one, right? Okay. And let's see what do we have here. So from this equation, we have uh, 3a equals 2d. So what can we say? 3 times 1. So 3 into 1 is equal to 2 times d. So we are trying to solve for these coefficients because that's our goal, right? So d is going to work out to be, as you can see, 3 by 2. Clear? And now you need to solve for p in the last one. So what does the last equation say? We have 2b. Uh, is equal to c plus d. So c was 1 here and d turned out to be 3 by 2. So 2b is equal to 1 plus 3 by 2. So we have over here 5 by 2 and therefore b is going to be 5 by 4. So all of you please check my calculations. Okay. So this is uh, what we are doing here. So if some of you are having doubts, take a look what we've done till now and then we are going to check is the equation balanced. So what is this magic method doing? We had, uh, since we don't know the coefficients, we are just going to put A, B, C, D here. That's what we put. And then we using this table, we are going to check how many atoms of nitrogen are there. So we use this equation A equal to C. Then we have 3A equal to 2D. And using oxygen equation, we have this. And then whichever coefficient is occurring the maximum number of times. So here you can see A occurs the maximum number of times. So we are going to take A as 1. And so C is also 1. And then solving, we got uh, uh, D is uh, 3 by 2. And solving this simple, you got 5 by 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute this in our equation. And let's see if it's balanced. So I'm just going to erase this here to make space. Right, so A is 1. So we've got 1 into ammonia, right? So 1. So what is B? We've got B as 5 by 4. So I'm going to write that here. So 5 by 4, O2, and C is also 1, so it's NO, plus D is, uh, D is over here, 3 by 2, right, H2. So guys, take a look. So I've just substituted the values of A, B, C, and D into this equation, right? And now, remember, we can't leave fractions, right? Because you can see there's a 5 by 4 here, there's a 3 by 2 here, that's not allowed. So to uh, get rid of the fractions, you can simply multiply. So what should we multiply by here? To remove the fractions, we are going to multiply by 4. Okay, because uh, you can't multiply, uh, because to get rid of the uh, denominators, we are going to multiply by 4 here. So let's multiply this whole equation by 4. And what do we get as a result of that? So this is going to become 4NH3, this will cancel. This is going to become 4NO and 3 by 2 times 4 is going to become 6. So I'm going to erase this and write or let me just cancel this here and write 6 here. Okay. So what are our final numbers? 4 ammonia and this we can and we have a 5 by 2 oxygen and this whole thing turns out to be 6 here. So take a look and I think we've balanced our equation. So this is the table technique so uh, sorry this is the ABCD method so guys take a look what we did we uh, solved for the values of ABCD and once you substituted here we've got our balanced equation so this is our final balanced equation and you can check there's four nitrogen on the left four on the right if you check hydrogen is 12 on the left it's 12 on the right oxygen is 10 on the left here can you see so five times two that's 10 and here it's also uh, can you see 4 plus 6 10 here okay so this is how you don't worry we'll take another look uh, at another example of the ABCD method but this is how you apply the method here clear all right so and guys if you have any doubts you can write it in the comments below or again watch these uh, steps after the live class but you just have to practice out this method and I'm sure you'll find it really easy okay so are you ready to try the next one? So let's go ahead and try another one for the ABCD method. So here, if you look at this equation, uh, this if you try to balance it by the table technique or hit and trial, 
it might take you a uh, time right so let's go ahead and try with the ABCD method so it's going to be a here so we're going to first put the coefficients so that's simple a b c d and since we have another term here we're going to put e here okay guys so just put down the coefficients for all the terms now again let's make our table here so our table is going to be the elements and can you see what is our elements here it's sulfur hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen okay and we are going to do the count of the atoms of each element on the left side and the right side and we are going to equate it okay so pretty simple just follow me just follow the steps and you'll find it really easy okay so if you look at sulfur how many atoms of sulfur on the left side so guys on the left side how many sulfur do you have here can you see it's going to be a atoms a times one so sulfur is a on the left side and on the right side you can see sulfur is going to be c times so because you have sulfur here so a equal to c right now guys let's take a look at hydrogen the next element so we have b into one so b times on the left side and on the right side how many hydrogen we have so it's two times c here can you see that two times c from h2so4 and then d into h2o right so that's going to be plus 2d okay and there's no more hydrogen on the right clear okay next let's take a look at nitrogen so nitrogen is going to be again there's b times one so b nitrogen on the left okay and on the right side we have e so we have b equal to e okay clear so we're just going element by element and writing the count of the atoms on the left and on the right hand side so it's really simple and oxygen we have three times b so b into three so that's going to be three b okay so please remember there's always three here but you have to multiply by b the coefficient very good so Srinivas says three b so that's three b on the left and now you take a look at the right side okay so how many do we have of oxygen on the right so you are in h2so4 you're getting uh, getting c so there's o4 so four times c so that's going to be 4c plus you have a d there plus d okay and plus two times e so guys check my equation if there's any error right so just uh, go element by element and write down the number of atoms now let's take a look so uh, you can see that a is uh, a is present once okay only once here we have c which is present three times b is present three times uh, d is only present two times so i think we're going to take so the element which is present the most number of times we're going to take that to be one so it can either be c or b so i'm going to take here as c to be one okay right so if c is equal to one from the first equation we get so from this equation we get a is also equal to one okay guys so just uh, take a look so simple c is equal to one a equal to one now what do we get from that let's go ahead and take a look at this one so we've got b equal to so this equation is going to become b equals 2 times c since we assumed it to be 1 so you can take it uh, any one to be 1 so that is 2 plus 2d right and b is equal to e so we can't do anything about that and for this equation we are going to get so this is going to become 3b equals 4 times c so that's going to be 4 into 1 4 plus we have a d plus 2e right and since we have b equal to e so instead of 2e i'm going to write 2b here okay so can you see that since b and e are same so we're going to write 2b here and so if we simplify this equation 3b minus 2b so it's going to be b equal to 4 plus d here clear guys so it's just doing some maths with this uh, i know sometimes this may look a little uh, difficult uh, to solve these equations but you know it's much easier than trying to balance the entire equation okay uh, okay i think uh, some of you are having little trouble uh, in understanding so let me explain you again clearly take a look at this abcd method nothing special here so um, i'm going to uh, explain you again 
So if you look in the original equation, you're just putting these coefficients A, B, C, D, E, okay? And then simply like the table method, you go element by element. So let's say we started with sulfur here, okay? So sulfur is A equal to C because A and you have C on this. Similarly, you do for hydrogen because uh, hydrogen, there's B atoms on the left and 2C plus 2D on the right and same way for nitrogen and oxygen. Now the only uh, task is left to solve for the coefficient. So do some maths. And uh, before you start solving, you can take the coefficient that occurs the maximum number of times, take that to be one. So we took here C equal to one, simple. And then on solving, since A and C are equal, we got A equal to one. Okay, great. And so now what do we have here? So we have these two equations, B is equal to 2D. And we have our second equation, B equal to 4D. So can you see we have two linear equations in two variables or what is known as simultaneous equations. So it's simple, you just solve for them. And it's uh, quite easy to solve for these because uh, since both are B on the left side, we can just equate it. So equating equation one and two, I'm going to write uh, four plus uh, D is equal to two plus two D, since both is equal to B, right? And solving, we are going to get uh, D equal to two. So if you solve this, we get D as two. So can you see we have solved for C, A and D. Now we can easily find B from this equation. B is going to be four plus D. So B is going to turn out to be six. And since B is equal to E, E is also turned out to be six. So it's really easy to solve this. Nothing special here. You're just doing some basic maths and solving these equations. So can you see we've solved all our coefficients. So now let's replace them and see what do we get? So A is one, so it's going to be S plus B is uh, six here. So six HNO3. And can you see what is C here? C is one, so equals H2SO4 plus D is, uh, what is, we solve for D, D is two, so two H2O, right? Can you see that guys? And E is equal to six, so plus six NO2, okay? So that's what we are getting as our answer. You don't believe me, uh, you check it yourself. Don't believe what I've written. Uh, assume uh, there's some mistake here. So go ahead and double check it, right? So this is the concept here that just write A, B, C, D and E and solve for the equations, okay? It looks a little complicated, but once you do on pen and paper, it's really easy. The numbers are pretty simple. And if you have any fractions left, remember, you need to multiply it so that you get the, uh, so that uh, you get whole numbers. You can't leave fractions in your final equation. So let's do a quick double check uh, over here. Can you see sulfur is one? One, so it's balanced. So always remember in your test, you must check is your equation balanced or not. So sulfur is one, one. Hydrogen is six on the left. And how many hydrogen here? Two plus two times two, four. So that's six, excellent. Nitrogen is six here. And nitrogen is again six. And oxygen is six times three, so that's 18. And here it's gonna be four plus two. So that's uh, six and you have 12 here. So six plus 12, 18. Excellent. So our equation is balanced. And trust me, if you had dry, uh, tried the hidden trial or table technique, it would have taken you uh, most probably much longer to solve these kind of equations. So please remember to use whichever method is convenient for you. But if it's getting difficult, this coefficient method or what is called the ABCD method really helps. So one important thing is, guys do remember to check after your equation is balanced because you shouldn't say in the test oh my equation was incorrectly balanced because after balancing it do the quick check that the numbers of atom on the left hand side and right hand side are they equal or not so make sure you're checking that the number of atoms of all the elements not just a few on the left and right are same so the equation should be balanced and another very important thing there should be no common multiplier in this equ equation. So this is a very common mistake. Can you tell me that what is the problem with this equation? Is the equation that I marked here, so this equation that you see here, 4H2 plus 2O2 gives 4H2O. Is this equation balanced or not? Guys, can you tell me? So is this equation balanced or is it not balanced? Okay, so is uh, this equation looks balanced, right? 
But what is the mistake in the balancing here? Is there something, uh, is there a problem in this balancing? So if you take a look, hydrogen is how much on the left? So our two elements are hydrogen and oxygen. So we have four times two, eight hydrogen on the left, and we have four times two, eight on the right. And we have two times two, four on oxygen, and four times one, four. So both hydrogen and oxygen are balanced, right? So this looks like a nice balanced equation. So we should say that our answer is correct. But actually, it's wrong, right? Because you have overbalanced it. Can you see that there's a common factor of two? So if I divide all these coefficients, all these coefficients, if we divide it by two, right? What are we going to get? It's going to become 2H2 plus O2 gives us 2H2O. So that is the correct balanced equation, right? That uh, where you don't have any common multiplier. So can you see that there's no common uh, thing over there uh, that uh, here we divided by two, so there's no common factor, right? So another way to say no common multiplier, I mean that there should be no common factor in the coefficients of the equation, right? So in your coefficients, there should be no common factor. So check that because sometimes this is a common mistake in the exam, you overbalanced it. Okay, your equation is correctly balanced and all, but let's say it's multiplied by two or by three. So don't be generous with your numbers. Try to use the smallest numbers possible. And this is a very, very important tip. At the end, make sure there's no common factor in the, uh, in the coefficients. Otherwise, and you can simply uh, balance it correctly just by dividing it by two. Okay, so now big question is, so we've learned, uh, so what are, uh, what are the methods that we've learned in this uh, uh, class? We learned the table method, the hidden trial method, and the ABCD method. And I told you the other important thing is patience and practice. Sometimes while using, uh, while uh, doing balancing of equations, we lose our patience. So we say, uh, this is not happening. I'm not able to balance this equation. Uh, it's not working out. Don't lose hope. Try it. Make sure your countings are correct. Make sure you've written the correct equation and keep trying with the easiest element. And I'm sure you'll do it. Now, a common question is that which method should we use? Okay, so here's my recommendation. First, practice the table method because that will give you an idea how you're balancing, what you're balancing. So this is always a good method to start with, right? So start by practicing this method first if you're not comfortable with balancing equations. But once you've mastered the table method, you don't need to use it as often, right? So after that, I would suggest the first thing to do is go directly for the hit and trial because hit and trial is fastest. Just multiply with the numbers and try to balance the equation quickly. Okay, because that will save your time in your exams. So go for the hit and trial method. If you don't feel comfortable, you can always fall back to the table method. If you feel the numbers are not working out. Okay, so guys, remember this, go for hit and trial first. So this should be your first option, right? And if it's turning out to be really difficult, because believe me, some balancing are tough. It takes time and with hit and trial, it gets frustrating because it's not balancing. Then this should be your best second option, the ABCD method. Because what is good about this method, it is foolproof, right? If you write your ABCD, E, U, whatever coefficients and you uh, sit and crunch the numbers, you sit and solve the numbers, you're definitely going to get the correct answer. Okay, so hit and trial method and if it's not working out, go for the ABCD technique. For those of you who are comfortable, who like using the table method, you can do it. Okay, but it's more time consuming. So this is my recommendation, hit and trial. Otherwise, if it's working out, it's difficult, go for the ABCD technique. Okay, guys, and don't lose patience. Keep practicing it. And here I have some questions for you to solve. So this is your homework. Try balancing these two equations. So I have two equations for you here equation one and equation two okay so these two equations right so this first equation and the second equation pb3o4 plus hcl gives pbcl2 plus h2o plus cl2 so first check is the equation balanced or not if it's not balance it and same for the next equation copper plus nitric acid gives copper nitrate plus water plus no okay and one very important thing guys don't learn up the balancing numbers okay 
you should practice balancing. Don't start learning equations like 2KCL gives 2KClO3 plus 3O2. I know many students uh, do that. Some of my friends used to do that. That's not a uh, good option, right? You must practice balancing and balance in the exam. Maybe if there are three or four very difficult equations in your textbook, you can learn those to save time of balancing in the equation. But please don't learn balancing numbers. You should be comfortable. You should learn how uh, to write equations with the help of atomicity and uh, valency and practice balancing. Become fast at it. I want you guys to become great at balancing and do it well. And so these, uh, this homework question, please go ahead and write your answers in the comments below and go ahead and use uh, the hidden trial method or table method, whichever you're comfortable with, or the ABCD method, because uh, some of these equations you might find difficult. So if hidden trial is not working, you can go for the coefficient technique. And I look forward to reading your answers. So try these two homework questions and write your answers in the comments below. And I've got some uh, uh, more videos for you on chemical reactions and equations. So you can watch this video. So just search for chemical reactions and equations, Manocha Academy. And you can also look for this video, the types of chemical uh, reactions. So these two videos will be very helpful for you. And this class was on balancing chemical equations. So once you watch these three videos, I'm fairly confident that you'll become a master of chemical equations. Okay, so you'll be able to really master uh, the equations and balance them easily. And you really understand how to convert word to chemical equations. Okay. And uh, I know a lot of you are asking, when is the live class? I'll keep on taking more live classes on physics, chemistry, and maths live classes also coming up. So guys, do hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't liked this video, hit the like button right now. And also hit the notification bell. So you guys get notified about our videos. So usually I'll be taking the classes in the evening. I'll try to take uh, classes every day or maybe alternate days. So I'm trying to take more and more live classes, guys. So thanks a lot for your support. Yes, I'll, I'll be taking classes of physics, uh, chemistry, mathematics. And uh, guys, it's awesome to read your comments and please do share out our video with your friends. And as I said, if you haven't checked out my website, do check it out. Our website is manochacademy.com and we have courses on uh, physics um, for class 10 and class nine, the full course. And uh, these courses have interactive videos uh, they have quizzes and questions for you to practice. You can ask your doubts and get replies from me. So they're really helpful in your exam preparation. And we have great discounts going on for these courses right now. So do avail those offers. They're for a limited time. And uh, guys, thanks a lot for your support. Hope you enjoyed this class. So do hit the like button and share it out with your friends. And uh, all the best. Uh, I, uh, I'm sure you'll become confident at chemical equations. So keep practicing and I'm sure you guys will do great. Okay, so take care everyone. Thanks for watching and uh, do share out this video with your friends. Thanks a lot.